Hi, this is part two of looking at culture and values and shaping values. I'd like to start by talking about the four corporate cultures model. And it talks about four different types of cultures that you see prominent within organizations now. And the first one is involvement culture, which creates internal focus and focuses on allowing all employees and all the different parts of the organizations to contribute to the overall goals. So their main focus is participation, allowing people to participate in what's going on. Uh, the next one was consistency culture, which is providing a culture where everything is, is always consistently the same and they have Time, everything's timelined. There's no kind of room for change. It's everything has to be set out to achieve what they've set out. Um, the next one was adaptability culture, which is often a culture you'll find in more of a volatile kind of organization where it could be like stocks or sales or t the te technological world now because it's constantly changing, it has to have extreme adaptability to be able to keep up with the competitive market that it's operating within. The other one was achievement culture, which is very much goal oriented driven and very much achievement driven. And the culture is either you achieve or you are out. Like it's like you've got to, it's probably more of a, sales, real estate, that kind of culture that comes into it. So so within this model, under each category, each of the four categories, it has different attributes, and these attributes make up the values that are within that culture. And footnote one, in, in, in the textbook, footnote, footnote two, it talks about that often you'll see a variety of the different strengths within the different categories of cultures that make up an organization. However, it did note that usually the most the, the companies that have been really, really successful have adopted strongly one of the cultures. So either the achievement, the adaptability, the consistency, or the participation, they usually are more dominant in one which I thought was quite interesting, footnote two. So leading on from there, I'd like to talk about value-based leadership. And value-based leadership, the definition is an influence relationship between leaders and followers that is based on shared, strongly internalized values that emphasize the common good and are consistently advocated and acted upon by the leader. And you'll see that within a value-based leader, they often have the same characteristics as an authentic leader, footnote two. And for an example of a person that was a value-based leader, I think of the case study that we looked at on Ray Anderson um, climbing Mount Sustainability. And he, through reading a book, felt that great conviction to change his company so that instead of depleting the environment, it was inputting back into the environment. So he then, based on the values that he decided he wanted to have, he then began the journey of recreating his company. And so from this, he led his company based on his values into a whole new way of doing things. He's a good example of someone who who had a dramatic change in their values and through that created a whole new culture. The next example of a value-based leadership was thinking about our own, my own company, my husband and my company, and what are the decisions that we've made within that is that we will pay our employees what is called the living wage based on studies that have been done in conducting what it is 
a person needs to be paid to be able to live well, to be able to save, to be able to have discretionary spending, taking it beyond just being able to cover your rent and food. It's looking at what a person needs to be paid based on the economy right now, based on inflation, and and looking at at what what the minimum wage is, but actually what what is the living wage. So we made the decision in our company that once a person is trained, we take them on. Sometimes we take people on who are completely unskilled, so we give them a few months of training up and seeing if it's for them. And then once they're at that point where where they're trained, we put them onto a living wage, which enables them to be able to cover their costs and and do what they need to do to get ahead. The other aspect of that is is that we feel, based on our values, that you should treat others as you would want them to treat you. So that means that if it was us and we were trying to live our life and trying to provide for our family, well, we would appreciate the fact that someone took what what we actually needed into consideration and paid us that. There is always a cost involved. It does obviously affect the amount of profit that we make, but we consider paying our employees well better than us making more profit based on the fact that we our, our values say it shouldn't just be about us but it should be about what our company can achieve for others as well so that was just another example of value-based leadership the next thing i'd like to talk about from this topic was ethical values and ethical values are now very sought after because of the environment that we now live in. Ethical values have have really been depleted a lot, especially in the business world. There's so much corruption. And so ethical values are something that are very, very important for the times that we live in now. And I'd like to read out a story that was from the textbook, footnote two. And it's from some Harvard students, so I'd like to start by reading that out. Some members of the 2009 graduating class of Harvard Business School did something unusual. They signed a voluntary student-led pledge saying that the goal of the business leader is to serve the greater good and promising that they will act responsibly and ethically and refrain, and refrain from advancing our narrow ambitions at the expense of others. At Harvard and other business schools, there has been an explosion of interest in ethics classes and activities that focus on personal and corporate resp social responsibility. Many students as well as educators are recognizing a need to give future leaders a deeper understanding of how to practically how to practice eth ethical leadership rather than just how to make money. At Columbia Business School, which requires an ethics course, students formed a popular leadership and ethics board and sponsors and lectures and other activity. So just bringing it back to that, that they signed a voluntary student-led pledge to serve the greater good. And I think that shows now that people are becoming more and more aware of, of every stakeholder that business affects. And that actually having that narrow focus of your own interests can lead to major corruption, can lead to depleting the environment, as we've talked about before with Ray Anderson, can lead to exploiting people and and what they get paid and their quality of life. And the having those ethical values in place is needs to be important, needs to be something that is talked about something that is thought about and something that is taken on board by every single organisation. Personally, I would like to think that through our business and what we do, that that really if all, all of it is just about making money, then it's just so 
pointless in a lot of ways. However, making the money isn't evil, isn't wrong, but I would like to believe that there's so much more meaning in what you can do in business. The fact that you can produce a lot of wealth can can help a lot of people, but thinking about all of the people that you could affect, all of the stakeholders, how can you be benefiting more than just yourself? How can you be how can you be contributing to the community? How can you be having a influence in a good way on those around you? And how can organizations bless the world rather than curse it? <laughs> so for me, looking at values and looking at who I want to be as a leader. This is a massive area that I want to get right. I want to make sure that the values that I have are overflowing and creating a culture around me that I'm having a good influence on my family, on the people that interact with us through our business, on whoever I'm around really in life, that that the culture I'm creating from the values that I have is creating good. I'd like to finish up there for part two of culture and values.